Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name's Die Chronic Ghost on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be taking a look at the Destiny 2 weekly reset for November 3rd, 2020. It's everything that has reset in the week to the special event stuff to uh, the Nightfalls and the Crucible and everything that is majorly weekly reset on Destiny 2. Firstly, there is actually no more Fest of the Lost. It is actually an ended event, but if you do log in right after reset, sometimes you can still see like uh, the tree here or you you can see the Iron Banner shield, or you can see event stuff, so this, the, these things are not supposed to be here, but uh, they are for my per current tower. But if you go to Eva, you can actually see that there's no more event because you cannot interact with her. And unfortunately, I forgot to pick up my wrapped items that, that I worked so hard to, 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 to get. Well, I keep, I don't know why I keep doing that. On top of that, if you don't know, the weekly reset has moved over to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. For some reason, they decided the weekly resets are going to be immune to daylight savings, so it is actually one hour earlier than it was before. So instead of 10 a.m., it is now 9 a.m. And this applies to all of the daily and weekly resets and Xur resets. Everything will be moving to 9 a.m. On top of that, there's a number of interesting things going on this week. First and foremost, in one week, we have the release of Beyond Light, a major DLC for Destiny 2. Definitely going to have a lot of content. Content. So this is the last opportunity to complete everything before the content vaulting all of the different old raids All of the different old exotic quests all of the different planets going away You need to complete it before the end of this week Otherwise some of those things may never be able to be completed again See the Bungie website on destiny content vault for more information on top of that this week is also double infamy rewards and double ordeal rewards and today we have a pretty good strike for the ordeal. Moving on with the regular weekly reset, starting off with the ordeal. This week it is Strange Terrain. And the reason why I say this is such a good one for the double rewards is firstly, it's a very fast strike. You can skip past a lot of the enemies. You can get through it. I believe the world record is like three minutes. So there's really fast you can get through it. And on top of that, the boss can also be nuked. You can kill him before he goes to his immunity phases before you have to deal with all of the hubbub. So if you find the right combo, my assumption is with a bubble, different swords, maybe a stun mechanic, and you can get this guy dead pretty quickly. As far as 100k goes, I believe 1050 is what you need. You might be able to get away with 1020, and with the exploit, you can actually do it on 750, although this will take a lot longer, so try to do it on as high difficulty as you can without it being too hard. For the regular Nightfalls, this week we have Garden World, Stra Strange Terrain, that's double Strange Terrain, Strange Terrain, and the Corrupted, if you wanted to do any one of these for Nightfall Uniques or whatever reason, is available this week. And keeping in mind that next season there will be no regular Nightfalls anymore, it'll instead just be the only ordeal. For the Heroic Modifier for this week will be Solar Singe. The Crucible playlist this week will be Mayhem, love this mode, definitely should play this if you haven't yet, and Countdown, which is uh, kind of like Search and Destroy. For the Gambit playlist, as I mentioned before, it is increased infamy. If you want double infamy during the week, triple during the weekend, you gotta go out and get some before the end of this week. For the boss this week, it will be the likeness of orcs. Anything available during the Oryx week will be available. Keeping in mind, spare rations is going to 140 RPM, meaning that it's a lot less useful on top of the fact there will be sunsetting. And the burn for Reckoning is Void Singe. For the Flashpoint this week, it will be on the Tangled Shore. Public events, lost sectors, and heroic adventures to complete this very quickly. Keeping in mind, if you still haven't completed the Varix the Loyal lore book, completing any of the Flashpoint items while it's the Flashpoint on the Tangled Shore will give you a chance to drop a page of that lore book. As for Escalation Protocol, this week it will be the Shotgun, and that's because last week was all three, and next week will be nothing, because Mars is going away. So this is the last opportunity to do Escalation Protocol if you need Escalation Protocol or Mars in general for anything at all. And personally, I'm still missing two of those damn SIVA nodes, 38 out of 40, and I... Honestly, I'll just never get that. I'm at peace with that. I don't know why you guys think I would be at peace. Moving on to the menagerie this week, we will have Pagori, and the very last menagerie of existence, because just like Mars, Nessus is going away. So if you ever needed anything from menagerie or for Pagori specifically, you have to do it this week. It's the last possible opportunity to not only get all of that, but also get all of the different menagerie drops. And the particular burn for menagerie this week will be Solar Singe, and the heroic version will have Extinct match game attrition and arc singe. And on top of that, this is also last opportunity to do anything for the tribute hall. So if you're still missing that solo flawless on that bad juju mission, or if you somehow still need a lot of those achievements, this is the last opportunity to do that. There's a lot of last opportunities here, people. Hopefully you've been grinding out all four of these planets for everything that you could possibly need for them because, well, Bye bye. However, there's a bunch of other things that are not going away. For example, the moon. That's not going away for probably a significant amount of time. 
For the moon stuff, starting up with the Nimer hunts, we have things like Tanix, Domina's Gall, and Fogoth. Fogoth being obviously the easiest one to complete because there's a number of places you can stand where the boss cannot see you. For the Garden of Salvation raid, this week it will be Leftovers. Leftovers is the first encounter of the raid, and in this encounter, do not kill any of the Cyclopses that spawn in during the Harpy boss's presence. So you can kill this, and you have to kill the Cyclopses that are already there, but you cannot kill any of the new ones that spawn in. Just wanted to mention in the middle of this video, I turn around and I can see my cat just sideways asleep on my bed and he's adorable! Yes you are! Yes you are! That little fluff ball thinks that it's his bed. It's not. Moving on to Ever vs. Inventory. <laughs> this always cracks me up. And moving on to Ever vs. Inventory, showing up everything that is available. Oh, I've always wanted this sparrow as well. And is this a ship? Those are pretty good looking items. Everything that is available for Bright Dust. First and foremost, we have the Callister Lancer, which is an arrivals item. This is going to be the last opportunity, obviously, to get a lot of the arrivals items until, obviously, uh, in three seasons when the. And this is not a joke. In three seasons when uh, this season goes into the Bright Engram. We're gonna... I still can't believe it's three seasons behind. It's ridiculous. We also have this ghost shell here, which is a guiding light. Um, random, random? For real? However, obviously next season there's gonna be a change to the ghost, so perhaps this is not very useful. On top of that, you also have transmit effects where you just come in a pill. Pretty straightforward. You have the bio loom, which is something that makes it look like this. The gun always paints so weird these days. I don't know what's going on with that. I mean, I might as well get it. The shaders are cheap. It's 40 for the first one, and then... Uh, then they got you hooked. For the other Bright Dust section, we have things like Another, which is obviously from Season of the Worthy. You have things like the Leggy Dance, where... Yeah, uh, we got some sparrows here, which actually a, a weird looking sparrow, definitely a unique one. You have this Hissing Silent Shell, which is gonna be random, random Omni Telemetry, not very good at all. You've got the Jewel of Saturn, you've got the Ornament for the Sturm, a weapon that is gonna get yet another set of changes following the release of Beyond Light. A couple other things like transmit effects that make it look really interesting. Uh, this one I had for a while, I definitely do like. A bunch of other things, Circadian Chill, uh, Arctic Pearl always looks very fun, especially on a... Oh wow, look on the gun here, it looks really nice. I, would, as I was gonna say, especially on the Hunter, colors pretty well. You got Circadian Chill, which I've been waiting for for a while, so definitely gonna pick myself some one of those. But yeah, everything else should be pretty straightforward. Again, I know I said this before, but this is the last opportunity to get anything from Arrivals. And uh, you're gonna be kind of stuck with what you got Arrivals-wise, because Bright and Grims suck. And uh, so if you want any of this stuff, you really do have to pick it up now, or at least this week before the end of the season. Birds! Birds! Come back! I wonder where are those birds are. That bird just flew through the wall. That bird just flew out of the wall! Damn birds. I, I didn't mean you, I meant, um, I meant the ones that actually fly. Not these flightless birds. And finally, we have Hawthorne's inventory showing off the weekly raid challenges. Two of these specifically will not be available ever again because their raids are going away. So hopefully you were able to complete a lot of those challenges. First and foremost, for the Lash Wish raid, we have Fight Forever. It's gonna be taking place in the third encounter of the raid. And this is gonna be the encounter with the big ogre boss. All you have to do is just not kill any of the regular sized ogres during the fight. For the Scourge of the Past raid, the final opportunity to get to each their own. It's gonna be taking place in the boss and counter and in this encounter every single one of the six different people have to destroy one of the shield generators each during the fight. And the last opportunity to get with both hands for the Crown of Sorrows raid is going to be taking place in the boss encounter of the raid. And in this encounter, during the DPS phase, while you're actually damaging the boss, the boss is going to raise up his hands. You can only shoot one hand once per person. So you just have three pairs of people, assign those to the three pairs of hands, and you can get those hands down. You know, I actually just had a bit of a weird thought. If Aldrin is coming back and beyond light, spoilers, not spoilers, they've already released trailers on that. Uh, as, a, as a guardian, uh, what stops Gaul from being brought back? Or is it like only humanoid? Why is there not a Cabal representation in the Guardians? I guess my question is why? Why is it that Exos, Awoken, and humans? Why, why are these the distinct ones? Like why we don't have Cabal if their memories are wiped? What does it matter? <laughs> Sometimes the things that Hawthorne says just cracks me up. Yeah, he was, he was looking at you funny because you're a bird. 
<laughs> Anyways, that's going to be the end of the video. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions, any concerns. Let me know what you guys still have left to do before the end of Beyond, or not the end of Beyond Light, before the start of Beyond Light. And of course, join me in my live streams that I have right after these reset videos, as well as a bunch of other times seen on screen right now. If you want to complete some stuff, I will be going through a lot of these things, as well as uh, grinding out master ordeals. So come join us. Uh, we'll be live pretty much right after. Anyways, that's been the end of the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name's Nightcrawler, and I'll see you guys on the next one.